What's up, welcome back. In this episode, you'll see how to solve day eight of the advent of code for 2022 with Ruby. This one is called Treetop Treehouse. And this is a pretty fun one. I think there was a couple of challenges last year that were similar to this, where you get a grid of numbers and then you have to do interesting things with the grid of numbers. In this case, the elves have a quadricopter. They're flying around some forest and measuring the heights of different trees. And we have to figure some things out about the trees. So this grid here is gonna be our puzzle input. And so this input represents the height of trees at different points. So right here, the tree is three high and then it's zero high and then three high, seven high, three high. So that's kind of like how tall the tree is. Each tree can only be one digit in height. What we need to do is first figure out if a tree is visible meaning that like from the top left, right, or bottom, we can see the tree because the other trees in front of it are smaller. So right here for this top left five, it is visible because if you were to look at the forest from the left, you would see a tree of height two. And then the next one you would see is a tree of height five. We wouldn't be able to see the tree behind it from the left because it's five, nor the other trees that are behind those because those are smaller. We're talking about maybe looking from the left. In this case, we would see this middle five. If we came from the right though, we would not be able to see the four because the nine is just like this really tall tree. So it gives us a bunch of test cases for this small grid. The top left five is visible. The top middle five is visible, etc. So what I want to do is go through and determine whether or not a tree is visible. And right now the like answer for the first part of the question is just how many of those are visible. So what I think what we wanna do is just transform this grid into a grid of ones and zeros. One if it's visible, zero if it's not, and we'll just take the sum. So the first thing we wanna do here is just kind of like iterate over the input. So we'll say data is data dot read lines, data dot map chomp, and then dot map to get out the characters. And that should get us kind of like some numbers, right? Or some like, I guess it's gonna be string values, but that'll give a, that'll get us started. So Ruby date. So when we run this, nothing is coming out because, we, and then we'll finally print out those results. So if we run this, if we run this net right now, we're getting the string values of the heights. So let's also map each of those and convert them into integers. All right, so now we have an array of arrays. Each row in the array represents sort of a line in our grid. And we can take this, this is kind of like the trees, okay? So we wanna take these trees and the first thing we wanna do is like check to see if there are any visible. So let's make a, a new method called check visible. And that's gonna take in some trees. And maybe it takes, let's have this spit out some like result. And the result is gonna be a new array and the way that we can figure out that array is by mapping over i and j or kind of like the coordinates of the matrix so what we can do here is say like trees dot length uh, dot times do i and then trees dot first dot length dot times do j and instead of just dot times we can do dot map i think and we should get back some new array. So for now, let's just put the number one in there and see what we get. So let's P check visible for trees and see what we get back. All right, so now we have just a bunch of ones. So now what we wanna do is maybe we'll change this to visibility and then we'll make another method check visible that takes in the trees, but also I and J. So we're gonna check the visibility of a specific tree and we'll just have this map over and return the visibility of a specific tree. So again, the if the trees are at the edges, then they're definitely visible because from the left, you can see the first tree, it's right at the edge. So we wanna return one if I is zero or J is zero or I or, Z or, I or J are kind of like at the boundaries. Okay. Otherwise, we want to return false at the bottom. So let's see what this gives us. Uh, okay, check. Oh, right, this should now be visibility. Okay, run that. All right, so now we can see like the top row and the bottom row are all ones. 
and then the rest are just showing us like, okay, yeah, we're, we're properly getting the outside. Now we need to do a part of this where we are gonna figure out whether or not um, a tree is actually visible that's in the inside. And so for this, we wanna say like something like return one if the, um, if the height at a certain point. So let's get the height. The height is gonna be tree trees at i, j. That's the value of the height. And let's also grab the row. So row is gonna be trees of i. The column is gonna be trees.transpose and then give us j. So let's look at transpose for just a second. You can take any uh, 2D array. So let's say that we start with one, two, three, four. Right, and you can call a dot transpose. We can call transpose on that, and that will like swap the rows and columns. So you'll see that the rows of a are one and two across the top, and then three and four across the bottom. And then when we call transpose, that transposes the matrix so that now we have one and three, which was the column, and then two and four, which was the second column. So transpose can come in handy anytime we're working with these grids. And we wanna say something like, if the height is greater than the max of row from zero up to, but not including J, and then we wanna return one if the height of this specific tree is greater than like J plus one to the end. And then we also wanna return it if the column is greater than zero to I, and then the height is greater than i plus one to negative one. I think that's right. I don't know, let's see. <laughs> let's run this. Okay, I don't think this is working as expected. So what I wanna do now is pull in RSpec and just write some quick tests. So we're gonna say if argv.empty require RSpec auto run, and then we're gonna say our spec.describe, it works for the example case. So expect visibility of trees to equal, and then here we're gonna like, we'll figure out kind of what we need to actually write out. Okay, so from the example instructions here, so the top left five in the middle, that's visible, so this should be one and then the top middle five is visible, that should be one. And then the top right one is not visible, the top left, or the left middle five is visible, and the center three is not visible from any direction, but the right middle three is visible from the right, and then the bottom row, the middle five is visible, so then this one should be one, Okay, so let's see if that works as expected, and it does not. We're expecting that this one is visible, but it's not. So let's go look at our let's go look at our math here. So the max. Oh, you know what? Maybe that needs to be three dots, right? Up to, but not including J. Okay, getting closer. Getting closer. Is our test correct here? No, it's not. Okay, so this one should be visible. I got that one wrong. Okay, so here, right, five is visible because you can see it from the left, but not the right, and three is not visible because this three is bigger than it, so I had the test wrong. Okay, let's test this out. Boom, okay, we have a passing test, and now what I wanna do is, let's actually convert this. Yeah, so like we have this working test. We're just gonna assume that this continues working. And then the answer is just gonna be something like p visibility of trees dot flatten dot sum. And that should give us some number 21 and that matches the example use case. So 21 trees are visible. And then if we grab our test input, which is this giant thing, and we're gonna open up day eight input, drop that, oh, drop that in. And then here, instead of data.readlines, we'll just, we'll say data is file.readlines of argv.0, so that we read it in from the uh, 
from our input. And we run it and we get 1719, which is our puzzle answer for part one. All right, hooray, nice, okay. Part two, content with the amount of tree cover. So now in part two, what we wanna do is try to figure out which tree has the best scenic view. And the way that you define a scenic view is how far you can see or how many trees you can see, basically. The way that you define a scenic view is you find a given tree, and then from that tree, you look outwards and you try to figure out um, how many trees you can see. So from this tree here, this number five, if we look to the left, we only see one tree, we see a five. And if we look up, we see one tree. If we look to the right, we see one, two trees. And if we look down, we're gonna see one, two. And so the way that you figure out the score is you multiply the scores for each direction. So one times one times two times two. And for this specific five, we get back the value four. And then if we wanted to look at the bottom five here, this one is actually just a little bit better because we can see two trees to the right, two trees to the left, and then two trees up and one tree down. So we end up with two times two times one times two, which is eight. And so that is the scenic value for this sort of this five here. So let's go back into our thing here. Let's write like another little test. So it like it works on the scenic stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. And so here, what we want to do is something like expect scenic score for a given tree. So we'll say trees of um, row one, so zero, one, and then column two. We expect the scenic score for that to be four. So let's change this to four. And then we expect the scenic score for zero, one, two, three, row three and column zero, one, two, again, to be eight. And let's just see if we can get this, uh, some like scenic score method working. So scenic score is gonna take in some trees and I and J. And this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so what we wanna do is figure out how many trees from that specific point going outwards. So if we're in the middle and we need to go to the left, we sort of need to start at this IJ position and then work our way to the left until either we hit the edge or we hit a tree that is the same size or taller than us. And then we need to stop and we'll include that tree. So we need to start from J minus one down to zero dot each do K. And then for, for that, we need to also get like, I guess the row again and the column again. And in this case, we're going across the row backwards. And I guess, should this be I? It should be J. It should be J. Okay, so then we're gonna, we need to count up how many scores there are. So the score in this case is gonna start at zero. And then we're gonna say score plus equals one for each tree that we encounter. And then we wanna break if row at K is greater than the height of the current tree. Um, so height again is gonna be trees at IJ. And is it, uh, I think it's greater than or equal to, we're gonna break. And then at the end of that, we want to like collect up the scores into some list. So we'll say scores, we'll shovel in the score. And then at the very end, we wanna do like, we wanna get the multiplication uh, applied across all the scores. So we'll say scores.inject times. And what's, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I think we might need to do kind of like the same thing for all the different directions, right? So this is to the left. Let's do it like uh, to the right, which is gonna be something like, we gotta reset the score down to zero. And then we need to go from J plus one up to length from J plus one to trees dot first dot length dot each. And then 
if the row at k is greater than or equal to the height, we add that up. Okay, so for now, let's just like p scores and see what we get. So we'll just run this again and undefined for greater than or, okay. So this is probably up to, but not including. Okay, expected four got two. So here we go, we have our scores, one and two. So is that right for this one? So to the left, there's one and to the right, there's two. Okay, I think that's, I don't know, it's directionally correct. And then, yeah, above is gonna be something like score is equal to zero. And then I minus one, yep, that's the row above all the way up to, yep, okay. And then we're gonna do score plus one, break if the column is greater than or equal to height, yep, and then uh, below. And this is where GitHub Copilot becomes like pretty good, right? Because it knows now the pattern that we're trying to follow. And I mean, it's not always, it's not always great, right? But in this case, okay, so I plus one is the row below us and we're going down to the final row. And then we, we wanna increment our score. And then after each of these, we wanna do scores, shovel in the score. And let's see what we get now. All right, so we got two, one, two, one. And we got, okay, so we, we actually have a passing test. So we can remove this print scores situation. What do we want from the end? What is the highest scenic score possible for any tree? So we want to map over all of these again. So I guess like visibility and then like, I don't know, scenery. Def. I, we could probably just comment this out and say scenic score. And now our visibility becomes visibility.flatten.max. And okay, uh, our test failed, but we got eight. Okay, so then if we run this with our input, day eight input. Okay, 590,824. So that is the answer for part two. Okay, so what we're doing now is we have this scenic score thing, which honestly, if you have a better way to do this, <laughs> like this is not, this is not clever at all. So please drop a link to a gist down in the description below with your preferred approach to growing out in different directions in the grid. So you don't have to write this out manually for all different uh, directions because that's kind of annoying. So um, yeah, show me how to do that better. Uh, <laughs> and then this visibility thing, this is like really handy because we're just mapping over. Um, one thing that is interesting is that down here, both for the first case and the second case, we called dot flatten. So instead of calling flatten there, we can use a method inside of our visibility called flat map. Because after we've like figured out the value that belongs there, we actually don't care whether the array is flat or not. And so by doing this, now we should get just, we just get like a single array and then we can just call max on it, right? And so let's do this without the input so it's a little bit easier to read, okay? So the output here is just like one like single array, right? It's flattened out. Um, so flat map can come in handy. I don't think we need to actually flat map this one because I think the inner elements are all already, yeah, the inner elements are already flat arrays. So we just call flat map on the top and that is going to look at all of the elements that are yielded to the block and it will call flatten on it after each one so that we end up with just this single thing here. Um, so if we don't need to preserve, if we don't need to preserve the sort of the grid or locations after we call something, in our case, we're either calling sum or we're calling, or we're calling max. We only need the values that are in the array. We don't actually need the entire array. So flat map, that can come in handy when you're talking about this stuff. Also, I don't know if you've seen this like dot times dot map thing, but that's kind of like an interesting way to create another array of arrays. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.